Daniel. back to Literary Gladiators. Uh, today we are your hosts. Nicole. <laughs> You're Steve. I'm Charlie. And I'm Josh. And today we're going to talk about another work. So Rob, what are we talking about? Howl by That's Alan. Howl. By Alan Ginsberg. So this poem. Like, the mature yeah. audiences. Um, Keep the kids away from the camera. Incredible. I'm throwing this one out there now. Keep the kids away from the camera. If you're 18, okay. If you're 17, go away. We're kidding. Go on and say. Oh, Lord. So, what's right. our first question? Despite the narrator saying, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, do you think the first part of the poem gives a kind of reverence to the narrator's surroundings? They are specifically based off of individuals. Uh, different uh, people that uh, Ginsburg has interacted with. But at the same time, he mentions that society views them in this fashion. Not necessarily Ginsburg and other people. He feels that they are doing this for a reason. And that there's a reason why they're this way. I think it was very literal. I think he looked at the conditions that surrounded him painted them in pretty words on the page yeah, and, pretty words. and you know it, it gave uh, a more dramatic picture for the reader but i think it was still very realistic i think he was being very literal and saying that these are the conditions that have he was he destroyed was, like he said the best minds that he knew while ginsburg supposedly intended the characters of part one to be the sacrifice to moloch or industrialization he never says what the sacrifice actually is or the reason for it. To you, what is the sacrifice? Why must it be given? Is the sacrifice necessarily negative? The great cause. Great cause in quotation marks. Ginsburg highly believes that uh, he also he wrote another poem called America, and he blasted uh, how America was. Uh, or the American, uh, the political world uh, was uh, really uh, swindling its citizens. And in Howell, he specifies uh, these specific uh, individuals, whether they are the uh, people that do various drugs or the police en engage in uh, sexual activity, whether it be public or private or heterosexual or homosexual. This was one heck of a poem to I, digest. Yeah, I think I really think he, oh, in a way, is almost saying the sacrifice isn't worth it. These are the people out here doing what they're doing, and I understand that it was it was a lot of negative imagery in the first part of the poem, but I don't know if that necessarily meant that it shall be forfeited for a chance at something better. The whole poem is a rant, so yeah. it's just about him, yeah. it's him getting angry. Uh, so this could be viewed as a simple bout of frustration. And, and it's all very... I mean, I don't think it can be viewed as simple anything. This poem has been worked and reworked mm. and looked over by some of the greatest poets of Ginsburg's time. This was chewed up and spit out by many people before it was published. I don't, I don't think there's anything simple about it. It could have started out as a bout of fr frustration and then reworked to make it more... Uh, I don't even want to say yeah. appropriate, because that's not the word. No. <laughs> it, to make it more readable, to make it more uh, more poem worthy. And, and I think that there was a lot of risk in, in a poem with so little punctuation and so little um, line breaks and such little formal organization in a sense to have the reader really understand what you're trying to say as an author. And I think that, obviously, that's something we're suffering from right now because there's so many different ways to go with this poem. So to say that, you know, the forfeit to industrialization was worth it. Sounded out. Sounds very uh, superficial compared to what the poem's really talking about. So whatever you do, like, don't listen to this poem out loud anywhere you are. <laughs> like if you're going to read it after this episode, just read it to yourself. 
You can pull up a video, but make sure nobody's watching. Headphones. Okay, go for it. The footnote is a lament to the holy. Is he saying that this is life, despite it being messy, it is beautiful, or is he being more sarcastic? Holy refers to holy this, holy that. It's We have those kinds of tangents. Uh, there are people that do that all the time. Uh, it's just another bout of frustration. Uh, I, life is beautiful, but I don't think that's what he's getting at. I think he recognizes that this is life, this is how it is, but this is not necessarily how it has to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was trying to communicate. And the figures that he was bringing in are, many of them were those that he respected. Uh, uh, Burroughs and Ker uh, Kerouac, mm -hmm. yeah. those people. And then he, he put his mother in there. Even if, even if his mother had issues, uh, she was still, uh, she was still mentioned uh, as uh, being holy, worthy. I mean, they're worthy for like the world, the life that you know. I feel like he's putting them, he's regarding them very well, but then he's also trying to say like, this is life, this is how it is. Like Nicole's saying that you know it doesn't have to be this way, and that these are the people that could make it in this new world type thing. I don't know. It's always <laughs> been a thing. Yeah. Here's the thing about how. Because I, I did a lot of, I've read this like five times in prep for this, and I still have nothing good enough to continue. And I think that's a note we have to make on Ginsburg, is that he's one of those minds that is just, there's no, it's hard, very there's no hard easy to way of yeah. looking at this. Very novel. difficult to pick apart. You read it over and over again, and it's like, it's a monotonous. Hell was but meant to true. deliver messages in a free verse style. It was meant to uh, put his ideas and his uh, feelings out on a piece of paper. It was meant to convey his, uh, what may have mentally been going on in his head. Uh, and he it, faced a lot of social issues that hadn't been faced. He faced a lot of, you know, he publicized a lot of wrongs that were being swept <coughs> under the rug in this poem. So it, it can almost be viewed as more of a newsreel. Like Ginsburg, the Ginsburg's also one of the very first people to go head on with the discussion of homosexuality in society. Uh, people would very much, uh, they find ways to address the issue, they uh, find ways to address it, but in a more... Uh, he dove it, right into it. He just went direct, uh, he went direct into the, uh, the imagery of the intercourse and the, the vision of the different uh, uh, body parts. He also talked about a lot of a lot of details of society that were just neglected. He talks about police brutality. He talks yeah. about crime rates. He talks about drug abuse and it's, what it's doing it's to society. Just, yeah. And it's 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 a it's almost a memoir. It's a what list. he's seeing, and it can't necessarily be deciphered to be one way or the other, or right or wrong, or we should change or we shouldn't, but what you can get out of it is this is how it was. It's just about his whole life up until the mid-1950s, which is when the poem is uh, written and released. I think also using a platform, being the poet using a platform, he's bringing social injustices and current issues to the forefront so that people are going to read it, people are going to have to wake up. That's usually, you know, in this time, that's what a lot of poets and a lot of, you know, musicians were trying to do, was bring about conversation. And a lot of these people... I mean, he just goes through the list of everything, which is and like, I'm going to talk about, you know, X, beat, Y, and Z. The beat and the confessional poets are highly known for that. Yeah. And, and I, was, I was about to say, a lot of these people, they were on drugs themselves. They had drug problems, some had drinking problems, you know. Um, I'm a musician, you probably know that, but now, um, and I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and, you know, have a drink, but, you know, that might alter their minds as well. But also, a lot of artists do believe that there is some merit to oh, yeah, hallucinations yeah. and, you know, hallucinogens, as well as alcohol, because it's going to bring about something in their brain. Yeah, you know, it could trigger to, something. It could probably trigger it, something. It'll, it'll create more, you know, 
imagery in you know oh, yeah. their mind that they can use and that they're going to go through an experience. Yeah. So there's two sides of the coin of you know drug use for you know artists, but that's an eccentric way of thinking. But sometimes it does uh, work yeah, for the individual. Maybe not in the long run, but yeah, no. When it comes to creating that creative spark, then perhaps. Yeah. Right. If you want to read more of Allen Ginsberg. Uh, and you have the money to spare, uh, you can check out his uh, book of completed poems, uh, everything from 1947 to 1997. Yeah, that, that's a big mammoth of a thing. No, I just read a table go, oh. Or, there's probably going to be a link at the bottom of this video, you can probably go and click it, it'll direct you either to the poem or to a download or to the e-version. So, Thank you for tuning in yet again to Literary Gladiators. Make sure you please subscribe to this channel so that you can watch another video next week. And thank you again. We'll see you next time. See you. Keep reading. Take care now. Bye. Bye.